Let us teach the New Testament. First Epistle of John, Lesson 10, 1 John 4, verses 7 through 13. In this tenth of fifteen lessons on the New Testament book of 1 John, we shall deal with these ten topics. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. Although the book of 1 John has been well preserved across 20 centuries, at chapter 4 verse 7, one 5th century manuscript inserts God after whoever loves, and one 4th century manuscript omits the phrase anyone who does not love does not know God. At verse 10 from the 4th century, two manuscripts read in this is the love of God, instead of, in this is love. From the 5th century, some manuscripts read, we loved God, or we were loving God, instead of, we have loved God. And one manuscript reads, that one loved us, instead of, he loved us. And a 4th century manuscript reads, has sent, instead of, sent. At verse 13 from the 5th century, some manuscripts read, He gave us, instead of, He has given us. Note these striking parallels between 1 John 4, 7-13, through 13, and in the Gospel of John. One John four seven through thirteen deals with the third of five major advantages of Christian faith. John's term for only monogenes underscores that Jesus is the only one of his kind or class, being unique of something that is the only example of its category. The biblical phrase, only Son, is used only of Jesus. Propitiation, elasmos, has always meant appeasement necessitated by sin. God has appeased his own wrath against human sin by lovingly sending Jesus to become our sacrifice for sins. Word order does not determine subject or predicate in Greek language. Grammarians explain that subject nouns normally have no definite article, and definite predicate nouns preceding the verb have no article. To distinguish subject from predicate nominatives, we must observe that 
If one nominative is a pronoun, then it is the subject. If one nominative is a proper noun or name, then it is the subject. And if a nominative following a verb has a definite article, then it is the subject. In this epistle, John employed predicate nouns to teach theological truth. In 2 verse 22, he states that Jesus is the Christ. In 4 8, God is love, but love is not God. In 4.15 and 5.5, Jesus is the Son of God. And in 5.1, Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you teachable points from the passage. For example, Seven points on God's love. Three points on Holy Trinity. And seven reasons for which we love one another. If need be, Teach the historical Christian doctrine of God's only Son. In past ages, God called created beings his sons, or his children. He called angels his sons, in Job 1.6. He called the wicked his sons, in Genesis 6.1. And he called the Israelites his son, in Deuteronomy 41.1. Of course, the New Testament calls Christians the sons of God. Long ago, God said that a special king would come some day, whom he called his son, Psalm 2-7. The prophet Daniel saw him coming with the clouds of heaven, calling him a son of man, 7:13. When the angel Gabriel appeared to the Virgin Mary, he explained that her child would be the son of the Most High and the Son of God. Thus Jesus is the only Son of God, because he is unique, for there is none other like him. He has been the spiritual Son of God forever, and he was born the human Son of God, and God has called him my beloved Son at his baptism and before his crucifixion. In some languages they translate unique Son of God. After someone or several have read or recited 1 John 4, 7 through 13 in small gatherings or house churches, pose queries such as these. What have you learnt from this passage about God? About Jesus? About Christian love? Whilst preaching, teaching, or leading, Recommend ways in which to apply the passage, putting it into practice. For example, review seven basic commandments of Jesus, including his new commandment. Recommend or discuss specific ways in which Christians show practical love to their spouse, to their household, to their family, to their faith community, to the larger community, to the needy, towards non-Christians, and towards enemies. Envision and plan together to start or to reproduce small groups or house churches in which Christians may have ample opportunity to show love one to another in many ways. Invite everyone to think about more ways in which to show love one for another, then pray that God himself will visit each one in a fresh way. Please, read five times 1 John 4, 14 through 21 before you view the next video lesson.